Here we go. It's Let's official. go. It's official. This has been such a journey for you. And so many people have, have contributed to, to this day coming. How are you feeling right now? Right now, I am feeling just happy, extremely happy, thrilled with all these people that I'm looking over and seeing this on the screen and um, being here with us tonight. I, I, it's surreal that this is actually happening and I feel great. I feel great. Yay! <laughs> all right. So let's start by introducing some people who have been incredibly important you've had a team of of cheerleaders and people who have supported you in so many different ways but i know that there are particularly some family members that you'd like to welcome and to introduce why don't you do that now okay well first of all i just want to I obviously wouldn't be here without my parents and um, my sister, you know, she didn't have to be here for me to be here. <laughs> That's something I would typically say to my sister, but she's here <laughs> and um, my mom is here and I am, I'd like to introduce my mom, Lucinda. I've lost her, her picture. There she is. She's waving. Um, she's here. She is visiting our room from Chapel Hill and has been a role model for me. In the book, you'll read a little bit about, um, how she has done that for me. And um, my sister is here. She is, um, I think may not be able to have the audio and video on, but Sarah Glover with the United Way t-shirt on, that's my sister. And a very, very special person who is, um, is just the best. You know, not everyone gets to have a sibling like I do. And she's awesome and I love you, Sarah. Um, and then um, also in the studio, we can we can just listen to him say hi. Hello. Is my <laughs> husband James, who is my rock and support. And then I also um, want to say hi to my kids who might watch the pre-recording or the recording later, um, Jay and Mary. And then I just I brought a little piece of my dad. Um, he of course passed away four and a half years ago, but um, this is his business card, and he started his own business. Um, called Glover Synergy. And he has little birds in his logo. And I just felt like he needed to be a part of this tonight. Yeah. So I brought this for him. That's Wonderful. my family that's here right now. Well, thank you to your family for, for being such a, a strong support of you in so many ways. Tonight is a celebration. This is a party. This is a it launch is. party and we are giving away a lot of stuff. I That's think right. it's time for our first giveaway. Let's do it. Let's All right. Do it. All right. So James, get ready to read who it is. Yeah. yeah so for those of you, um, those of you on Zoom, what we've done is everybody who's registered has a number and um, every number is, um, is in the bowl. So I'm going to pull uh, pull the number, and James is going to let us know who is behind that number. And this person is going to win a copy, a signed copy of the book. Yes, we've got some copies of the book mm -hmm. to give away, and then what else are we giving away? Um, later on, we'll be giving away this, uh, this a pack of note cards, which is has the original Unleashed painting on it that was created that turned out to be the cover of the book, or actually was inspired to be the cover. So we're giving away books and note cards tonight. And for those of you that don't know the story of the book, or the story of the painting, that's something you will learn more about in just a few minutes. That's right. But our first winner is lucky number 14. James, who is number 14? <laughs> no joke. 14 is Lucinda Clark. Woohoo! Yay! My mom won. Yay, Yay mom! <laughs> <laughs> She's Wonderful. the reason I'm here, so it's, it's, it's all appropriate. Yes, that is completely appropriate for, <laughs> for Ms. Lucinda to have won the first book. All right, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about your process of writing the book. Okay. Actually, what do you want the reader to take away from reading the book? What's your hope? Oh, I have so many hopes. Um, my biggest hope is that in sharing my stories in this book 
and how I got through some really not so fun times that others will see a path and they won't have to be stuck where I was feeling like my voice didn't matter, feeling less than confident, even though I tried to pretend like I was confident and I really thought maybe I was hiding it pretty well, but um, or hiding the fact that I wasn't. But my hope is that every reader who reads this will feel inspired and know and just know that they are valuable. They don't have to do anything else. They are already valuable. And that's all they need to know yes. to be able to find their voice and make their mark in this world. They are valuable just as they are. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I have read the book and I can tell you that that message comes through loud and clear. You are inspiring so many women and men and children to honor and embrace and use their voice. So, Thank you. You're welcome. You are welcome. What surprised you most as you were writing the book? It's, it is a long process. What surprised you most about your experience? <laughs> But there's so much to do. There's so many tiny little things. I don't know how many other authors there are out there, but there's so many things to think about. So you think about, you know, just what goes into each chapter. What's the overall flow of the book? How do you incorporate certain experiences and write about them in a way that are is, that is relatable? And then what really surprised me is when it came down to getting this thing published, mm -hmm. how much there is to it. You know, if you put it up on on the Ingram Spark site so that you can get it into Barnes and Noble and other retail sellers like that and, and bookstores can order from there. And then you get it up on Amazon, which is a totally different file. It's a totally different file for Amazon and oh, Ingram. Lovely. And then the ebook is a totally different file. And it's just it's, the cover is different for both Ingram and, and there's so many little things. Um, but it was really fun and I had such a good team. I would never ever have made this without my team, without my team. And a lot of them are here. So is now a good time? Perfect time to introduce some of that team. All right, is Beth here? There's Beth, she's waving. Beth Lodig. I wanna introduce Beth, who is the owner of Inspire Books. And she has been a writing coach for me, but I like to call her my book doula. <laughs> doula. <laughs> doula. <laughs> because, my book doula because this was like giving birth. It was like giving birth because there was so much a part of me that was ready to be released, but it had to be at the right time. Mm -hmm. And I knew it was coming and I would get really nervous, just like, you, like I did before my kids were born. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really ready for them to be here, but I'm really not ready for them to be here. You know, there's just so much to do. So Beth, um, if you would just say hi to everybody, I would, I would love that. I think she's unmuted. Let's yeah, hi everyone. I'm so excited to be here. This, it is really like attending a, an exciting birth. And I love the comparison to being a doula. That fits perfectly. <laughs> yeah, she's actually in California. Mm. And, um, but that didn't matter because of technology. And right. she was with me every step of the way um, and has been just the reason that I've been able to stay calm and birth this book. So thank you, Beth. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. And um, I'd like to introduce uh, one more person next, which would be Dan. Okay. All right. Dan's here. Dan's, Dan's right Dan, above Beth. Right above Beth in our view. Dan, say hi. I will definitely say hi. It's great to be here. The, the day has finally come. And uh, absolutely thrilled to be your cover, your 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 cover artist. And uh, you know, I heard it was a party tonight, so I I hope you don't mind. I inv I invited Elvis to <laughs> come along as well. Uh, he, he he was going to a a party at the county jail, and uh, so I told him to go ahead and just you know stop on in because nice. this was going to be a uh, a raucous party for my friend Helen, who is uh, going to be a world famous uh, rock and roll author here. So um, good to be so here. Good Thank to you, be Dan. here. Now, Dan is the artist. Can you all show the slide with the painting? 
that is the original artwork, the image of it that Dan created, which is also on this note card. And um, that store, the painting is called Unleashed. Wendy was actually with me when we went to Dan's wow. studio to see it to, for the unveiling. And that was just the most magical experience ever. So it was so heartwarming and such a spiritual experience. It was. Yeah, it was. So it, it, it was a um, crying what, party. What happened was, <laughs> go ahead. I was just, I was just going to say, Dan, that I commissioned Dan to create this painting mm -hmm. because it represented a time that was so very special to me and actually kind of kicked off this journey of four and a half years that the book really concentrates on from my life. Mm -hmm. So um, what I'd like to do now with this painting here is, is read to everyone the, the, the story of what inspired this painting called Unleashed. And of course, you know, if you read the book that I'm over 50, so I need my glasses. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna read, this will be about five minutes or so this passage, so you understand, this was the first thing that gave me a taste of what an unleashed voice might be like. And, um, and specifically your voice. Specifically mine, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. All right, so here we go. January 9th, 2016 was a day I will never forget. It was the first day I ever truly surrendered my fear of being judged by people close to me. It was the first time I let go of the pressure to do what I thought others thought I should do, either for me to fit in or for them to like me. It was my first true taste of freedom. A few months earlier, my friend and Bible study leader, Frances Penick, approached me to help her with a women's retreat at our church that she was planning. Specifically, she asked me to oversee selecting and leading the music for the event, which was to be called Drawing Near. Frances said she knew I was the right one for the job. My gut immediately told me two things. First, she was right. I was meant to oversee the music. That was very clear to me too. And second, fulfilling this commitment was going to test my courage in a big way. A little background here will be helpful for you to know. I discovered contemporary Christian music when driving to visit my parents in the North Carolina mountains in late 2013. The few radio stations I could find with a clear signal during one long stretch of the drive all played Christian music. With no other music options, I listened. And to my surprise, I was hooked immediately. I found the songs reassuring, comforting, encouraging, and easy to sing along to, putting me in a good mood before arriving at my parents' home. I craved more and more of this music in my daily life and started playing it at home. I continued to listen in secret to Christian music as much as possible for over a year, but I didn't dare tell any of my choir friends about it. At that time, I had been a member of our Episcopal Church's adult choir for 24 years singing Anglican chant, traditional anthems and hymns in four-part harmony. Any instrumental accompaniment was played on our magnificent pipe organ with piano, string, and brass instruments joining in on special occasions. Our choir is lucky to have many talented and classically trained musicians as members. People with this background tend to not like contemporary Christian music and can be quite vocal about it. I never spoke up when fellow choir members found occasion to put down this genre of music in my presence. For example, they made fun of the simplicity or repetition in praise music or asserted that guitars and drums did not belong in a real worship service. I didn't say anything to let them know I disagreed when hearing those comments because I wanted to fit in and be a part of this group. I really thought they wouldn't like me if they knew I liked that music. I look back now and I'm sad that I was so misaligned then. Responding to a nudge from the spirit, I didn't hesitate to say yes after Francis asked me to lead the event's music. As soon as I agreed, a song that had meant a lot to me immediately came to mind, Holy Spirit by Francesca Battistelli. I knew in my heart at that moment that I was supposed to sing this song at the drawing near retreat. It would be the anchor song for the weekend and for all the people who attended. This song had power. 
There was just one problem, however. Holy Spirit is in the contemporary Christian genre, and singing it would require that I assemble a praise band for the event. I feared that if I brought that type of music to our Episcopal Church, at a minimum, I would be ostracized by my fellow choir members who clearly didn't appreciate it. At worst, they might kick me out of the choir. I seriously was afraid that might happen. But I did it anyway. I did it because I felt called to this purpose. Pressing forward, I assembled a band with the help of a good friend and musician from another church. I also included traditional hymns, songs, and instruments in the event music to balance it all out. Drawing Near arrived, and I stepped up to the mic to sing the opening contemporary Christian song with the band. It went fine. No one rushed to kick me out of the choir. The other songs, contemporary and traditional, were also well-received throughout the event. At the end of the retreat, the guest speaker, Lisa Harper, invited the women to sit or kneel as they preferred and reflect over the weekend while the band sang the final song over them. The final song was Holy Spirit. Standing at the microphone, as I begin to sing, began to sing the refrain for the first time, I felt my hands start to lift. Oh no, no one raises their hands at this church. They'll make fun of me. I put my hands back at my sides. They lifted again on their own, getting a little higher as I sang the next phrase, and I forced them back down again. They will surely kick me out of the choir now. As I sang the next phrase, I felt my arms rise at my sides yet again. That time, I surrendered and just let them go. My hands and arms effortlessly and swiftly rose up high above my shoulders, reaching out to God as I sang. In that unforgettable moment, I felt freer than I had ever felt before. At that moment, it was just about me and the Holy Spirit. I didn't care about what my choir friends might think. It didn't matter if they did kick me out of the choir. This moment was worth it. My heart was full. It didn't matter what anyone else thought because I was with God and God was with me and in me. I had tasted and seen ultimate freedom unending love and loss of shame. I was free. My true voice and all that comes with it was unleashed. Wow. And that's where it began. How did you meet Dan? I met Dan uh, through Emerging Women, North Carolina. He had been commissioned to paint some angel paintings. Um, for that event, and um, I saw the first painting that was unveil unveiled, and I was like, this man is going to paint something for me, <laughs> but I just knew it. I just knew it, and, and Dan and I have talked about that, um, but he translated that story to this painting, and I, and I think you can see mm -hmm. the, how wonderful of a job he did, and um, I'm very, very grateful for that. Thank you, Dan. It's absolutely my, my pleasure, and you did such a great job of communicating your vision for your book and, of course, telling me that incredible story, and I won't go on, but I, I could totally relate to it in my own church experience back in, back in my 20s, so, and I went to a sleepy little church that wasn't too crazy about raising hands, and uh, I, can, I, I just totally got your story. You, you really got inside my heart with your story and I'm, I'm just glad it, it did come out on the canvas for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so that was Dan and uh, the next person I wanted to introduce is Nora. Uh, Nora Richardson is here. Hi Nora. Hi, Nora. Hi how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Nora is the person who took this and turned it into the cover. If you can go back to that other cover slide, that'd be great. Um, she was the person who designed the cover. Oh, oh, Nora, hold on. Time out. We have to give something away. <laughs> it's time for our next giveaway. And this is a copy of this the is, book? This or will this be the... a set of 10 note cards. Okay, great. Perfect timing, right after Yes. Kelly. Watch Dan win. 
Who's number 46, James? Number 46 is Dot Wiggins. Dot! Is Dot here? I think she is. Yes. She's All right, Dot! Woohoo! Yay, Dot! All right, Dot. I'll get those to you. I know how to find you. All right, oh, so okay. we were talking we're about talking Nora. About Nora. Yes. Yes. I'm in. <laughs> Nora, Nora has created my entire brand. She mm -hmm. designed my entire brand based on my story. And, um, and just got to know that. And, and those flowers mm -hmm. are on brand. And uh, those are from Nora today. She brought those, sent those to me. Thank you, Nora. Let me pause you for just a minute because you have gone through a rebranding, a new branding um, that, tell us a little bit about that. That's right. I am, um, I'm changing the name of my business from the old one, which was Command Communication, and a lot it was kind of cumbersome to say. So now I'm at Speak Up Communications, and uh, Nora has designed a new, uh, a new logo, which I didn't bring a bigger picture of, but it's a bird, which is why I pointed out the birds on my dad's business card. Um, but it's a beautiful bird singing is the logo, and Speak Up With Heart is my new motto, which Nora also helped me discover. That is kind of the the whole encompasses all yeah. of what I do. Mm -hmm. um, so Nora, uh, thank you for being here. And by the way, we're hoping there'll be time for questions for Beth and Dan mm -hmm. and Nora and the other people that we will introduce um, moving forward. Yes. Great. Let's, um, let's ask another question. I'm, I'm curious, um, Bishop Michael Curry wrote the foreword to your book. How on earth did that happen? Well, um, first of all, here's a Michael Curry, if you don't know, he is the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church USA. And he's probably most famous for having given the sermon or the homily, we would say, um, at the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Um, he used to be, he actually lives in North Carolina, and he used to be the bishop of the Diocese of North Carolina, which is where my church is. Um, and about a year ago, we were, I was planning a book. I was feeling like I'm, I'm in the mood to write it. And Wendy, of course, um, this, this monumental person in my life, Wendy, was with me. And, and we were talking about the foreword. And she said, you know, what if you wrote, what if you asked Bishop Curry to write your foreword? And at the time, I thought, <laughs> no way. That's too big of an ask. I, did, I couldn't do that. But as time went on, um, I got up the courage and I asked him. And then it took a very long time for him to respond, so much so um, that I had given up on him. I had given up on him. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, understandably so. He's very busy. In fact, this book, Love is the Way, I give him a plug because this is his new book, which just came out today as well. Um, and I, and it, it's great. I've already read it. Um, I highly encourage you to take a look at that. But just when I'd given up and I was working on a different plan, he showed, an, an email showed up and said, I'd like to write the foreword for your book. I'm interested in doing that. And then he did. So why did he, what was it about the book that led him to decide to write it? I think it... He talks about love and love is the way. And, and I think what he saw in my book was how important it is for everyone to find their voice and speak out with love. Yeah. And I think he saw that my message is a little bit aligned with his, mm -hmm. not, not just a little bit, it's, it's, it's quite aligned. It is. So um, I think he saw it as an opportunity to lend his voice to the cause in another way. Yeah, what, what I see as similar and, and aligned is that your book is a message of self-love mm -hmm. and how, how self-love is the way just as much as, as love for others. Yeah, it's important. It has to happen first. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right, you want, let's, um, let's see if there are questions from the audience. Sure. Um, let's pause. So if you have a question for Helen, there is a question to share his link the link for his book. Oh, okay. Um, um, it's, well, it's, uh, you can go to amazon.com and type in love is the way. I didn't prepare that link, but love is the way on Amazon. You can find it there or mm -hmm. probably any other bookseller too. 
Um, but I will, I, I have got, I know who registered, so I can forward you the link after this Great. too. Yeah, we can send it out to, to everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Absolutely. So if you have a question for Helen, go ahead and, and raise your hand. We'll see if we can unmute you. And I'll also look at chat. Or if you have a question for Beth or Nora or Dan. People love the story of um, behind, the, behind the painting and the book cover. Where are we? Oh, where are we? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> we are in the studio of Attended Events, and Evan Carroll, who runs the studio, is here. And thank you, Evan. You're welcome. <laughs> um, he and so, his team are doing a wonderful job keeping us safe and making us look not shiny. <laughs> that's right. Helping us shine on camera in a good way. <laughs> that's right. Shine in the, in the most appropriate way. Yes, that's right. exactly. Yeah, so that's uh, why I wanted to get out of my house. Uh, for many reasons, and I also wanted to be here um, just for something different. And they assured us, and we, we all wore our masks coming in, but we are six feet apart, and everyone else is wearing masks, and uh, we're being safe. We have hand we sanitizer and, and all of that, but it's a great location, and, and we're thrilled to be here. We Thanks for the question. Yes. Heidi McKinney asks, how did the pandemic influence your book? How, that's a great mm -hmm. question. How did the, the pandemic influence it? Well, um, it kept me at home, <laughs> so I had more time to write and fit that in. Mm -hmm. That was definitely one way that it affected it. Um, at one point, and Beth, I know you'll remember this, um, at one point I was concerned that maybe with the pandemic, the whole world was going to change and what I had to say would no longer be relevant. Mm. I kind of went through that moment of like, well, but you know, uh, the things I talk about, you know, maybe they're not going to be that way for everybody else. And I don't know, should I address the pandemic? And then, you know, we prayed about it, we thought about it, and we decided that um, it ultimately was an evergreen book, because we all need to love ourselves and find our voice and know that we have value. Every human being, every human being has value. Yes. But uh, that's probably getting through the recognition that the story that I wrote is timeless um, was something the pandemic actually taught me. Beautiful, beautiful. Al Her is asking, what are some of the steps that you used to come up with your new brand? Oh, well, Nora has to help me out with that. The, um, the, the speak up, well, several people were involved in the process. Um, I was talking with Barbara Hemphill about this. Beth was talking about this with me. I was talking with my marketing person. Is Ashley on the call? Um, but I was talking with several people about the idea and Nora and what would it be? Um, command communication. Everyone always wanted to put an S on the end of it. <laughs> so, um, which was not the case. But speak up communications does have the S on the end of it, and it is encompassing various types of, of communication. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the steps of finding the name. And then uh, Nora just did her magic to find the logo. And she's like, I'm thinking a bird. And I'm yeah. a bird? Yes, of course it's a bird. Of course, Nora, it's a bird. It is. Um, those are some steps, but I don't know. Do you have anything else to add, Nora? No, OK. <laughs> Hopefully you did that a great is. job. You did a great job. Okay. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Question for Helen. What's, this is from Barbara Hemphill. Okay. What was the most difficult thing about writing the book? The most difficult thing was worrying about the stories that involved other people, mm -hmm. uh, particularly my children and my husband. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very careful to tell just enough of the details that would, would help people who might be in my situation mm -hmm. um, be able to relate without compromising their integrity um, and their privacy too much, because mm -hmm. uh, my kids are 20 and 15 right now, so they are, um, you know, they, they, huh. they need some privacy and I need to respect that. But I was worried about that, but I asked my son about it and he said, I trust you to put the right parts in there. And Mary actually read it, uh, the part that was about her. 
And James, you know, he, he's the hero. He gets to be the hero in the book um, because he is. He really is my hero. Go, James. Uh, let's see. How has Sarah, your sister Sarah, asks, how has writing the book changed you? Oh, well, I have to answer that question this way. Writing the book has changed me because recently, like within the last month, I, had a, I was feeling overwhelmed and I was, those voices were starting to come back. And suddenly I just was reading through the book, trying to edit it. And I ran through some of the pages where I wrote about how I overcame some of those things. <laughs> and suddenly there I was and I could just let them go. And I, I could, I talk about in the book at one point that I can actually turn things around in less than 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's, that's what's changed the most. So when I see something with one of my kids or with the world or with me listening to should statements and, and trying to uh, go back into those old patterns, I don't have to. I don't have to. I can step yeah. out of that pretty quickly. And, and that's what the book did for me. I call that interval training, the interval between when something bad happens and we are often, you know, knocked down. Mm -hmm how long we stay down before we get up. That's yeah. what I call an interval. And you're, you have shortened your intervals of being knocked down. That's right. Yeah. That's I right. saw that when we went to lunch on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Yeah. You, and you pointed it out, which was really neat. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what time it is because Heidi who's on the call, who's my fashion fairy godmother Got and dressed battery. for the evening. Lovely, um, Heidi. <laughs> she told me not to wear my watch, so I didn't. And I don't know where we are on time. We are at 8.02. Okay, cool. All right. Um, Courtney Chavez asks, are you considering writing any more books in the future? Or what else do you have to share with us? Ah, well, yes, as a matter of fact. Uh, the first thing I think I'm gonna do is make a companion workbook. Mm -hmm. to this book. At the end of each chapter are five questions, but I actually have more than five that I called it down to the five. So I'm, I'm looking to make a workbook. I think that this, there could be book clubs, uh, mm -hmm. circles, reading circles that would benefit from or might want to share this book. And I thought the workbook would be handy for them to have. And the other thing that I want to do at the same time is a companion journal. So it would have this beautiful image on the front and it would have a few prompts um, and maybe some pages with lines and some pages without lines uh, for people to use as a companion to their story of unleashing their voice. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, I want to uh, pause with the audience questions to make sure that Marcy is still here because I know um, that um, Marcy is someone else, Marcy Rader is someone else that you wanted to acknowledge That's for right. her contribution. That's right. Marcy Rader was a, one of my coaches and one of the people that were instrumental. She was instrumental in helping me get to where I am. And uh, Marcy and I just had a conversation yesterday about shooting on yourself and uh, what, that, what that looks like and, and how that can be so destructive. Um, she also helped me understand when I talk about mission critical seasons, in the book, um, she was the one that planted that for me, that Helen, <laughs> you know, things are going on with your daughter's health right now. Things are going on with your mother's health right now. This happened early in the year. And, you know, you've got to take care of yourself. So that's always mission critical, number one, right, Marcy? And um, also, sometimes everything else doesn't really matter. You can just, just focus on your mission critical missions. And uh, so that's what she taught me how to do. Thank you, Marcy. Can you say hi? Yes, I can say hi. I'm so happy for you and I love this book. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay. Yay. So uh, Marcy is also available. Marcy and Beth and, and Dan and Nora. And then I want to, can I go ahead and introduce, yeah. let's, let me also introduce Barbara Hemphill um, right now. Um, Barbara is the clutter lady. Um, she is the person who had the wisdom of these four words. Clutter is postponed decisions. Uh, she was the one who came up with that. And we did also an interview about, about that. 
Barbara met me very soon after that experience, that unleashed experience mm -hmm. in my church. And um, we met at a conference for that Tiffany Largy was hosting in Raleigh. Um, and I definitely talk about Tiffany in the book. She was not able to be here tonight. Um, but Barbara and I immediately hooked up together and, and connected and, and she came over to my house. And I was like, okay, I've got to do something about the clutter. I just felt like I needed to. <gasps> oh, Barbara, time out. Time out. It's time to give away another book. I wish I was more dramatic about this. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, so we have to remember that the first one was the book and the second one were the note cards. Now this is also the book. Who's number 44, James? 44, Valerie Tribune. Valerie Tribune. Valerie. Is Valerie here? I do not see Valerie. Hmm. Must be present to win. Must be present or? to win. All right. Must be present to win. Sorry, Valerie. Sorry, Valerie. <laughs> Thirty-three. Marcy Raider. Marcy. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do I get? Yes, you won. What do I get? A book. Get a book. Well, of course I do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Yay. All right. So back to Barbara. Yes. Um, Barbara came to my house and <laughs> it was, it was a mess. It was a mess. And Barbara, we talked about how it was covering up my voice, all the clutter and everything. And she has just, she, she came in at, at just the right time. I was just getting started on my journey. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was the one who inspired me to, um, to write a book. She was talking about how, um, how there are so many people with so much clutter. And if I were willing to share my story about how getting, moving through the clutter, telling it who's boss, that's the name of the chapter about clutter in my book. If I was able to do that, I could help so many people. Yeah. And if I could write it in a book, I could help so many people. And I will tell you that many people have, who've read it, um, some of my previewers have said how much they resonate with that. And um, that clutter, it, it claims our voice. Mm -hmm. It really does. And we have to, we have to move, move beyond it. So Barbara was instrumental. Will you say hi, Barbara? Oh, I'd love to. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. And I'm so proud of you. You look radiant. Um, and the message is so important. You know, we talked about how the pandemic had changed it. And I think the pandemic has just made it more important because I think what's happened is it's revealed to people how many people were doing things that they didn't really want to do or like to do. And now they're finding that it's kind of time to reset and reading your book is so inspiring to people. And so I just thank you for having the courage to do it and the persistence. I think uh, the statistics are that 80% of the population um, says they have a book in them, but it's something like 3% actually write it and only 2% publish it. So uh, you're in a rare world. So congratulations and thank you for persisting to get it done. You will bless the world for many, many years to come. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much. Ah, beautiful. Ah. So do you want to go into, want them to go into breakout rooms? Yeah, let's do the breakout room activity. Okay. All right, so we are going to, um, we are going to do a five minute breakout room activity. What we want you to do is to tell the people in your breakout room, first introduce yourself to them, tell them how you know Helen, and then we'd like for you to share a time when you spoke up, when you felt empowered to speak up. It could be about anything because there is value in everything that you do. So we're gonna put you into breakout rooms of three to four people for five minutes. So um, give me just a moment to set that up and then off you'll go. We thought this would be a good way for you to have a chance to use your voice in this, um, in this celebration.
And I'll keep talking while Wendy is setting yep, it up because I know how to do that. Um, I, <laughs> I love to talk. My daughter used to tell me that, mommy, I think your favorite activity is talking. And I think she's right. All right, Look, looks like it, we're breaking up. So enjoy your breakout rooms. I'm breaking out. Breaking out, not breaking up. <laughs> Welcome back. I think there was another person that you wanted to introduce, and then I'm going to invite um, the folks who uh, said they had some incredible experiences shared in the breakout rooms to see if um, if any of them want to share in the large group. Okay. But who is who is the other person you want? There's to one uh, new friend in my life, a very special person that I believe I was meant to meet. And um, she is joining us. If you see on the screen, the, the one that says E, um, I didn't warn her that I might introduce her, but Elizabeth is my virtual assistant or remote worker. She actually lives in Nairobi and Kenya. And she is up in the middle of the night to be here. And I just wanted to acknowledge that. And I don't know, Elizabeth, if you can unmute or, or get your video either way and say hi, but if not, um, I just love having you in my life. I'm so glad you're a part of my team. And I think it is so cool that you are here from Kenya tonight. I think that is just like the best. So uh, yay. Yay, Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> yay. yay. All right, so uh, we got some chat messages that there were some incredible experiences shared in the breakout room. So if you would like to share something you heard in the breakout room, um, and we invite you to, to raise your hand and we will, uh, we will unmute you. Who's got, a, who's got an experience to share? I have an experience that Helen actually helped me with. This is Marcy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go for so it, this, Marcy. Yeah, so this was recent and it was in um, July. I went home to see my dad and my parents and we have very different views on many things, most things. And it was a hard, hard weekend. For me, um, we have different political views, different social social justice views. He lives in a very rural part of Indiana in a, in a bubble. And I see him three times a year. And I was with him for about 48 hours, not all of which I was even able to see him. And normally I have no problem saying how I feel and speaking up. And I made the decision not to, and because I just wanted to be with my dad and love my dad. And Helen was actually one of the people that I messaged. I left Helen a, a voice memo, almost telling her about it and, and in some way get wanting permission and, um, or to, to tell me that that was the right thing to not speak up and speak out. And um, she said that she would have done the same thing. And um, you even alluded to speaking up with heart. And I just chose to stay silent with my heart be out of love for my dad. And it was one of the best messages that anyone could have given me at the time. So you don't you do not even know, well, now you know how meaningful that was to me coming from the person who is encouraging and is making a business out of telling people to speak up that it was okay for me not to. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Marcy. Mm -hmm. It is. That's your heart speaking. Oh, sorry, Marcy, to cut you off with this. <laughs> I was done. I was I done. It's the prize. The prize oh. yeah. Peter, we need off. to bring the energy up anyway. I kind of brought it down. Now we bring it up. All right, so this is for another pack of 10 note cards. Who is it? Number 19. James, who's number 19? Melissa Howell. Melissa Howell. Yes, oh Melissa's goodness. in the house. Congratulations, Melissa. All right, Melissa. You get you. We'll work that out. 
because she already ordered some, but you know, that's okay. We'll work it out, Mo Melissa. Yay. All right. All right. So um, we're, we have one more giveaway. We're going to give away one more book at the very end. Okay. But uh, do we have time for a, a few more questions? If people have questions? We do. If you have um, a question for, for Helen, or for any of the other people yeah, that we or introduced. anybody who has played a role, anybody in the room, um, feel free to type that in chat. We've answered all the questions. I think we have <laughs> thus far. I don't, I think we've got them all. All right. Well, I'll invite all of you to take screenshots or take your cameras and, and take pictures of what it looks like on your screen uh, so that I can see. I see this right here, but I don't have my camera, so I can't take my own little screenshot. But um, I have, oh, I have um, loved, loved having all of you with me virtually. Yay, I'm giving you a big hug. Um, this has been such a big journey. All of you who are on this call are, have been a part of this journey. You've all, you've all contributed to this and to what this is going to become in the world. Um, this is a movement, I think, that, it, that it's time for, that people know that their voice matters. And if my journey and the, the stories that I tell that, are, that were hard to tell some of them, if they can help just one more person, then I've done my job. I've planted that seed and, and that's what, what really matters. You have unleashed your voice. Yes, I have. You have. And you are inspiring so many people to unleash theirs, and to tap into their voice and to use it. So Helen, thank you. I am gonna do a shameless plug before we, uh, before we wrap up that Last I knew, Helen's book was number four on the Amazon uh, list in, go ahead. It was, it was a, um, uh, adult Christian ministry was the category, but it's, uh, it was at number four. So if you haven't bought the book yet on Amazon, you can buy the ebook or the paperback version. Um, or if you have someone in mind you'd like to give it to as a gift, you could help me potentially get to the bestseller status. It's not about that. It's not about being a bestseller. It's about that if I am, then more people will, then my book will show up in more searches and I can reach more people. And, and that's what I'm about. I wanna reach more people. Let's help Helen reach more people. And there's one more thing. The next slide is the, a, a video playlist I've put together with all these interviews with people, uh, with Nora and Barbara and Marcy and Dan and uh, Beth. Uh, so far, and there might be a few more that I end up adding, but uh, this is a video playlist and the bit.ly link at the bottom, bit.ly slash voice unleashed playlist. Um, you're certainly welcome to take a look at that if you would like. Um, but yeah, do yeah. Do we have one more prize? We do, we have to do one more giveaway for a book. The last lucky winner is number 31, James. 31, Tracy Phillips. Tracy Phillips. Tracy's not here. She told me she couldn't come at the last minute. So, okay. Oops. sorry, Tracy. Sorry, Tracy. Number 36. Phoebe. 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 Nope. Nope. Sorry, Phoebe. Nope. One more time. Third time's a charm. Number 34. Uh, Vidya Raymond. Vidya's here. All right, Yay, Vidya. Vidya. You win a book. Yay. Yay. All right. Well, I want to do a huge thank you to thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. You're welcome, Wendy. Uh, you, you and I just were meant to be friends, and you have. And I just remembered you were the one who took me to the, introduced me to the first Tiffany workshop too. So I mean, so many important things that happened were because of you, and I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for being here. I am honored to be with you, and and to celebrate you and this part of your journey. 
I also want to do a huge thank you to Evan Carroll and attended yes. events. Yay, Evan, Your entire team has done an incredible job. Thank you. Thank you very much from me too. Wow, very good, very good. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, y'all have a good night. Thanks for your support. I love you. I love you. Great all. job, Helen. And, um, great job. We'll. Uh, thank you. Have a great evening. We'll good talk job, soon. Good job, Wendy. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.